What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 387th edition of TSR Live, your daily dose of red pill truth, wisdom, and, and awareness. It is Wednesday, December 26th, 2018. It is the day after Christmas. Hopefully, everybody had a good Christmas. Everybody got home, flew home safely. I didn't go see my family. I think I went and saw my family last Thanksgiving. They're like, Donovan, you coming for Christmas? I said, nope, I got work to do. So I stayed here. As always, we are presented in part by 1821manmade.com, your one-stop shop for all of your beard grooming needs. We are also brought to you by Happy Hippo Herbals, home of the highest quality kratom and purest kratom on the market. If you want to be fearless around girls and uh, and have a relaxed energy, visit happyhippoherbals.com and save 20% when you pay with Bitcoin. Guys, I know I've been a little loud the last couple of days because I turned my gain way up. Let me know if I sound okay. If I'm too loud, too soft, whatever. Let me guys know you guys are my ears. Real quick, shout out to Russ H. Russ H. who contributed $50 uh, during the Christmas episode yesterday, and I didn't have my event list pulled up, but $50 from Russ H. Uh, via the via the Donovan Sharp uh, the streamlabs.com forward slash Donovan Sharp streamlabs link. All right, well, let's get to it. My guest, of course, is he is the founder and CEO of 21 Studios. He is also the brains behind the Red Pill Summit. We like to call the 21 Convention as well as the Red Man Group, which airs every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. I, of course, am talking about Anthony Dream Johnson. And Anthony, I think I speak for everyone watching uh, when I say that we greatly, greatly appreciate you making time for us today, man. Hell yeah, man. I uh, I love your show and uh, having you on the Red Man Group, and it's good to be here, man. Fuck yeah. Good, good stuff. Let's get right into it, man. Private marriage. This is something that a lot of people have been kicking around as of late. What with the divorce court system, family law, guy, yep. listen, like TFM says, getting your, your wallet ripped out of your ass, that is absolutely true. Having your kids taken away, paternity fraud. So let's start off, I guess, talk to me like a fifth grader. What exactly is private marriage and how does it work? Yeah, so disclaimer before we even get, get into that, I'm not an attorney. There you so go. So anything I say is not uh, legally buying advice. Uh, I'm not even expert legal matters. This is an idea I came to on my own, and I'm kind of an amateur in understanding how it works. But I actually did it in my own life, so I speak from experience with it to a large extent. Uh, that had its own complications that you know about from the you know the BPD stuff. Yeah. Anyway, though, I've done it. I've looked into it to a significant amount, a lot more than the average dude, and actually, you know, worked out in real life. Good. So Very good. The, 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 yeah. And so the basics of how it works, uh, like you talk about in your show, like we talk about in Red Pill and the Red Man Group at the 21 Convention, uh, pretty much anywhere in the manosphere, marriage in the West today is fucked in like 10 different, 10,000 different ways, not 10, 10,000. Right. You see the all assault on men and masculinity and fatherhood and marriage and monogamy and family formation across the West, across culture, across uh, all kinds of media, education, school, government, everything. So private marriage was an idea I came to on my own, uh, kind of loosely thinking about it, just literally thinking it up out of my own ass when I was like uh, probably 23 years old, 22, 23 wow. years old. Okay. Yeah, and that, that came from two influences. Uh, let me know too if my video has any problems. I might be able to speed up my internet. No, you're good. Anyway, you, you're, you sound good. Everything is all in sync, so you're good, man. Okay, he froze up for a second, so I was like, oh, shit. Okay. Anyway, uh, so I was pretty young, but I, was, I had a long history, obviously, in the manosphere at that point. I'd spent a lot of time in the pickup community, and I had some interaction as well with the men's rights guys. I was familiar with Paul Elam. I had been interviewed yep. on, the, on the Spearhead uh, back in the day, which is like a big men's rights magazine before it got shut down. And uh, so I was familiar with all that stuff. And from the pickup community and from the men's rights community, I was familiar with guys getting burned by marriage, like fucking hard. Probably right. in the red pill, dude. Dudes crash land in the red pill. They're like, holy shit! I just got divorce raped. My life got turned upside down. I was thinking about suicide. I don't see my kids anymore. Yeah. I lost, dude. I know a guy from the convention. This guy, Mark, he lost like a half a million dollars in a divorce recently. What? It's, it's savage shit. I mean, you've heard shit like that too. It's a savage, God dude. Damn, like it's dude. half a every... million though. The guy must be yeah. well. The guy was loaded. He isn't now. God damn. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, yeah. It fucking sucks, dude. Like he's an awesome guy too. So, well, dude, it hurt. Like when I hear that stuff, like when I listen, we know that that goes on. But when it's in yeah. your face, yes, Anthony, I lost yep. a half a million dollars in a divorce. That that hurts, man. Yep. Dude, that's the same guy who literally got me VIP access to meet Dave Rubin and Jordan Peterson. No, like okay. the cool, like right. the coolest fucking guy, the coolest fucking guy. And then he gets his whole life fucking ripped out of his ass or his wallet ripped out of his ass. He said, unbelievable, dude. Anyway, I came up with the idea of private marriage before I realized that, of course, I was not the first one to think of this. 
I was just kind of coming to my own conclusions based on my experience in the pickup community, seeing older dudes arrive in, in the seduction community, getting right. divorce raped as well. They weren't as, as well supported in their ideas as they're on the red pill, of course. But even sure. in the pickup community, it was it was an issue. It's like, why are you here? It's like, oh, you got your life ruined by family court. OK, what else? Is <laughs> right, right. Anyway, what I what I realized is when I mixed those experiences and those hearing things I would hear about from men's rights and pickup, I mixed that with a very hardcore libertarian philosophy that I got from Ron Paul. And I was like, wait a second, why the fuck? It, to the extent I'm not committing fraud, what is the purpose right. of actually getting a legally recognized marriage? What use is that going to do? Independent of the legal mumbo jumbo, what mm -hmm. good is that going to do for my life to invite the government into my home and into my relationship and into my castle right. and my life? Yes. So that's, that's really where it came from. At the end of the day, the private marriage, I saw some questions you had on your Patreon thing. Yeah. Um, basically, it's not like a prenup. Like a prenup is a small step in the right direction. I don't think they're like very reliable. I don't recommend them to guys. Okay. It's better than nothing <laughs> if you're going to go through with it, I guess. But, you know, like there's whole movies and documentaries written about this or produced about this. Prenups are not the magic bullet that the common culture portrays them to be. Not even close. No, no. The prenups are designed to lull men into a false sense of security. Oh, just get a prenup and everything will be fine. Yeah. No, they they, yeah. they know it's not, and so does your future ex-wife. Yeah, and it's probably, I would imagine that's getting worse day by day. Like 20 years ago, maybe they had more clout to them. Now it's like you have the whole feminine imperative, right. the entire feminist movement, pussy hats, all that shit uh, has all these little micro expressions you see in like, I'm sure in courtrooms and stuff sure. where this stuff gets argued and, you know, day by day. So it's really, I wouldn't recommend it. It's nowhere near the magic bullet is portrayed as. At best, a prenup would be like a band aid <laughs> to, a gun, to, to a gunshot wound, right? Yeah, right, right. So private marriage is kind of like how a prenup is portrayed to work. It covers your ass in some very serious ways because okay. you never, well, in my case, here's what I did. And the, the end result is we never got a legally recognized marriage on purpose. Good. I knew, I demanded that, first of all, there was zero discussion about anything else ever. Second, I made my family aware of that, my friends, and then her family, and her fr well, if you don't have any friends, red flag number, <laughs> number fucking right, number, right? there it is, right, right, right. But basically made it made it visible on a social level that A, we're gonna have a wedding, B, we're gonna be together and build a family someday, C, at no point ever was a marriage license gonna be entered into with the state of Florida, the state of Nevada, where we got married or anywhere. Right. And this was very firm, and I got some pushback from my own family on this, uh, immediate to an extent, but extended family in particular, and it was a very no bullshit conversation. It's like, hey, you know what? You can either take it or fucking leave it. Like, this is yep. not, I don't care about your religious beliefs. I don't care about your thoughts about the government. I don't care about right. your thoughts about family court. I know what I'm doing to an extent. I don't need, right? like, I don't need your permission, dude. And by the way, you yeah, got married exactly. in Vegas, right? Yeah, but I didn't meet her. So it's, it's hysterical that I married a hooker in Vegas on accident. Yeah, that is that right. is funny. And when you got married, I was yeah. probably living there. Anthony, right. Anthony, dude, I might have been driving by the chapel the chapel you guys got married in. Yeah. Had I seen you in there, because this is post-Red Pill, I'd have been like, you know what? That young man looks like he's about to go make him steak. Yep. Hey, yep. Well, we, got, Good we, got, you. we actually got married at the at the chapel at TI in Treasure Island. No shit. No yeah, fucking dude. shit. Oh my god, dude. I can yep. tell you some stories. And anyway, was, go ahead. That was actually uh that was actually I got some stories there too, actually, from the old pickup days. I went to a Love Systems <laughs> conference there and had an interesting time back in way back in the day. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, man. it was it's the a, Vegas a, thing was uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the Vegas thing was uh just it's hysterical looking back at it. It's just ironic though, or coincidental. Because we both Jesus. lived in Florida where I met her. But right. I, I had some pretty, I have some pretty bad family relationships, and I was like, let me just get the fuck out of here to get married. Like, I don't want to, I don't have to deal with people showing up that I don't, I don't fucking want there. Oh, fuck that, get out of here. So with that's that. where, the, so that's where I came from. Anyway, though, a private marriage is something where you go through all the motions of getting married today in the West, mm -hmm. but you purposefully design it so that everyone's aware socially, and you never ever legally get married or a state recognized marriage. On purpose, you avoid common law marriage, which is available now in like maybe nine or ten states, including DC. Okay. Uh, most states, though, of course, then don't have it. They don't recognize it. They'll recognize it from other states that do have it, but they don't have it in their own state, or they've recently done away with it. I think Florida got rid of it in the 1960s. It's, it's actually really interesting. With the rise of feminism, you've actually seen state governments get away from common law marriage. Yeah, that's interesting. You would think that they would be more in favor of that because of feminism, yeah. but that's just one of the yeah. anomalies, I guess. Yeah, for now. And they could easily, we could talk about it too. Like other, like Black Label Logic and a few others have pointed out that if private marriage, like I like I did it, and we'll probably do it again someday, if that ever takes off, you would see an immediate push for feminist imperative to lock it down. There's a, it's a big discussion though, because there's some interesting points to that. Anyway, let, let me be more specific though. When I say go through the motions of marriage, I mean that in some pretty important ways. So obviously we had a wedding. 
We had a wedding in Las Vegas. We could have had it anywhere. But in Vegas, it was on purpose. Both families came out. There's probably 45 some people there or something like that. I also live streamed it on my YouTube channel, 21 Studios. No fucking shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I gotta got to see it. Yeah, I gotta check that out. I gotta, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is too funny. Yeah. I picked a, an officiator for the wedding that, of course, was not recognized by the state of Nevada or Florida uh, on, you know, on purpose. But right. he was a speaker at the convention as well. He was someone who, uh, I had, like Socrates. Socrates yeah. was one of the candidates for it. How like the next time I, I do this, if and when, I'd probably pick Socrates to do it. Okay, all right. Um, so, I, so, and that respected my philosophic and kind of religious beliefs. I'm not religious, but in that, in the way that's used commonly. No, I, I understand. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Obviously, we had a wedding, which is basically a giant party, of course, right? It was a good time, though. I had a bachelor party, went to a strip club, got yeah. drunk for the first time. Uh, it was a good time. Uh, so that was that. Then we had a uh, we had a honeymoon for a week long in Hawaii. In like one of the better islands it was awesome. Good time. Probably Kauai because that's like the most scenic island. The one in the furthest yeah, yeah, yeah. northwest. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was Kauai. Yeah, I think yeah. that's. I gotta look back on it. Yeah, it was a good time. Um, and that's that's like very cliche, I guess, stereotypical. But I mean, sure. Hawaii. I'm from Florida and I love Florida, but Hawaii was fucking beautiful, man. Oh shit! Dude. I was there it's a couple like, of years back, man. It is. Oh, it's out of the yeah, yeah. We're definitely going back. Yeah. Okay, so like, so you go like, through all the motions. You go through all the physical motions of a marriage, but you never sign the marriage. Uh, sign a marriage license or a marriage well, certificate. There's, there's a few more. There's one, one or two more things that I should mention before okay, we get yeah. off it. Yeah, so after the marriage, she she got her last name changed to mine, Johnson. Didn't hyphenate. How did she do that? How did she do that? I'm about to do that in my middle name, actually, from Paul to Dream. I'm going to make that switch, right? Merge, merge, merge with the shadow self. <laughs> um, so it's it was actually, my understanding that if a woman were to change her last name, she would have to go to the Social Security Administration and present a marriage license, and they would then change her no. last name. So you can get your name changed. No, 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 no. I, that's just a myth, I guess. So you can get God your name. Changed. You can get any part of your name changed to pretty much whatever you want if a judge signs off on it. How and they that? will. They will in like virtually any case, unless you're changing it to maybe to something really crazy. They wouldn't do it. Yeah, like but, fuck you. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they would do that, honestly, but they'll do like pretty much anything else you can think of that's not extremely. I don't know all the laws of name, changing names, but I know it's not that hard. Yeah, as long as uh, it's reasonable, then they'll, then I guess that they'll let you do it. Yeah. That. And it, no, it's a pain in the ass. It takes a few weeks. It takes about, I think she spent about 400 bucks doing it. I didn't pay for it. I paid for shit. No. Dude, she know. had the money, obviously, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Anyway, though, but even now, changing my name, from middle name from Paul to Dream, it's not a huge deal, but it's going to cost like 400 bucks. I have to get my passport changed, social security card changed, driver's license changed. And before I do all that, I have to go to the courthouse and file paperwork to even initiate it. Then I have to go show up in front of a judge, just like in a little meeting. It's not like sure. a courtroom or anything. And he's just like, why are you changing your name? What's the reason? Because so I, I don't know. I, don't, I wasn't there when she did it. But in my case with Dream, I'm going to be like, well, it's my business name I've gone by. My middle name, I have no, I have no tattoo. I don't care about it. I don't use it for anything. It was like a million Pauls. Yeah, it's just Paul, so I don't give a shit about it. In her case, I don't know what she told him, but I hope, who knows if it was fraudulent or not. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, listen, off the topic real quick, where is yeah. Medusa, by the way? Have you seen her? Do you know what she's up to? Like, what's she doing these days? I, dude, I got no idea. I haven't talked to her uh, in like two years, over two years at this point. Jeez, man. I, yeah, yeah man. I mean, I did see briefly about a year, a little over a year ago, it looked like she was trying to get into softcore porn. Um, oh, yeah. This, this was kind of a guess we had going at the convention. It was in 2017. This was kind of like a thing. Uh, <laughs> but who knows? I mean, I, if I was her, that's what I would do. I would go into like, you know. Yeah, why not? That. Yeah, totally. Just roll with it, you know? Yeah, dude. Listen, she can either anyway. move to Northern California or Las Vegas. She'll be, you know. Oh, well, she, she got married, though, for like a few months after we uh, we split up to some other yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, yeah. I don't know how legal that was and stuff or whatever, but she, there was definitely like a marriage, like a wedding and shit. All so. right. Yeah, that's what they always do. I mean, she'll, she's probably going to get married. Who knows how many more times? Yeah, but listen, I would um, I'll put the over under at five. Yeah, yeah, easy, easy. Anyway, for private marriage, though, like I mentioned, it's a lot of the mechanics of marriage minus the legal as many legal entanglements as you can avoid and minimize. Okay. So we traded rings. Cool. We uh, I didn't even buy our ring. Right. We don't even ask about that shit. <laughs> So I uh she had mine though engraved with my favorite saying, which is like so fucking Machiavellian, dude. It's fucking crazy. Anyway, uh, so it was a wedding, of course. There was a honeymoon. Both families were involved. They were invited. They were told what was going on. It wasn't some fishy shit. Uh, sure. It wasn't It wasn't like they were surprised. You know, Anthony and her never got legally married. Also, we didn't just do some sort of, sort of. Uh, it wasn't just like some hidden thing with like three fucking people at it. It was like 40-something people. You know, okay, so it was shit. a sizable
and it was just what Michigan was so much harder, right? legal yeah, stuff. They care so much less about the listen. The only reason why they care about the legal stuff is because of what's coming to them potentially. But as far as the yeah. wedding is concerned, you I don't know. You've probably never heard of this song. It's called "I Don't Want to Get Married, I Just Want a Wedding." I've I've heard of the con- yeah. I mean, the concept makes perfect sense yeah, totally, which is a whole issue in itself. I mean, if she cares more about the wedding than marrying you, then you have a big problem. You have yeah, a much that's, bigger that's problem. Black flag, than, dude. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah, get your red flag. And uh, yeah, I mean, um, if, if I was going to say too, if a woman absolutely wants to get legally married, like if she had given me more pushback, I would have bolted out. Okay. She gave some, when I met, when I brought this up to her for the first time, if she gave me some light pushback, but she realized pretty quickly I was never going to budge on it for like 10 different philosophic reasons of why it was important to me. It was never going to budge and never did. Good. I would say I've talked to other women about it since then. It's like fuck buddies and stuff. And most of them are pretty receptive. Now that could just be bullshit. They're telling me what I want, what I want to hear, of course. <laughs> but I do think that any woman who gives you really serious pushback on trying to force you into a legal marriage is a really it's a huge red flag. You need to get out of that immediately. Like that's yes. that's numero uno. She's planning to divorce rape. Yes, like absolutely. Like actual intent. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's funny because girls used to make the big deal out of their boyfriends telling them, hey, baby, marriage ain't nothing but a piece of paper. And then girls come back and say, no, it's not just nothing but a piece of paper. It's the sanctity. No, 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 no. It, yeah. It's it's much more than a piece of paper, but not for the reasons the girl tells the boyfriend that it is. It doesn't mean anything to you in that regard. That's yeah. the that's the bottom line there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, some things uh, I should mention too. So there are some things like DDJ when we had him on the Red Man Group that one yeah, time. Yeah, recommend recently. Uh, private marriage for some reason. Uh, uh, we, we'll talk about it more. I mean, in my opinion, firmly, it's the best thing you could. It's the best hope you could have to even do anything like that at this point. Sure, of course. Other than just never even having a wedding period, which isn't. A, I mean, you could do that too. But legal marriage is definitely a fucking bad idea in almost every case imaginable, if not every case at this point yeah. in the West. Yep. Anyway, though, what he brought up, and he, he's right, 100%, is private marriage, so all the functions of marriage minus, or most of the functions of marriage minus the legal stuff, it doesn't protect you from false rape accusations. It doesn't protect you from false domestic violence, uh, domestic violence accusations. It doesn't protect you from uh, any other kind of Machiavellian sketchy ass shit like that. Right. And it's going to do almost nothing to protect your children. Uh, you're fucking family court no matter what. Father's yeah. rights are in the shitter, independent of marriage or not. So there's still some very serious uh, elements to having a woman in your life that are dangerous. Never mind some more extreme shit like a woman being a hooker or uh, <laughs> stab, you know, stabbing you, boiling, pouring boiling water on you. I think I saw an NFL player, a college football player, maybe a year ago that got his girlfriend yeah, pouring boiling um, water on him. Yeah, John U. Smith, man. Um, he tried to break up with his girlfriend yeah. or something, and I guess they worked out, or and then like he fell asleep on his couch and she fucking poured boiling water on him. Yeah, it was yeah, totally. unbelievable. Yeah, but the joke's on her. He got drafted in the third round, and he's looking oh, at a pretty big contract. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so she, so you know, she, uh, she fucked herself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but there are some things that it, you know, marriage is fucked in the West in a lot of different ways. Like it, oh, yeah. this is just one. This is like uh, it's more than a band aid. Like it's a pretty good solution. It's a lot better than a prenup, but it doesn't fix all the other things that are fucked up in the West today with interacting with women, being in a relationship, trying to start a family. Uh, navigating any kind of you know family court thing, independent of divorce. Right. Uh, right. A woman taking the kids and running. You know, the laws, by the way, change per state with all this shit. Right. Uh, except common law marriage is pretty. It, it's pretty consistent throughout the forty states that uh, don't honor it or don't do it, don't offer it. So it sounds to me like what you're saying is that private marriage pretty much protects you. It, it protects you from a lot of things, but as soon as you have children, all bets are off because family court. All that, that's all going to be. Well, you. she can't, I don't think she can get, I, I can, I've never, it would be unthinkable, almost unthinkable, right? I mean, anything's possible. Of course. But she, she could get child support out of you, of course, because you have kids and it doesn't matter if you're married or not. That has no effect on it, right. as far as I know and understand. But alimony, she can't get because you were never fucking married. There you go. There you you got to be careful because DDJ also brought up that she could try taking the kids and trying to live temporarily in a state that does have common law marriage. So if a woman was really motivated and actually smart enough to look at the legal stuff. And a lot of them are. Yeah, sure. They're motivated and clever. Women, are, I don't know how intelligent women like that are, but they're very clever. And uh, that's something they could try, and that's definitely foreseeable. If Medusa and I had a, ch- a child, that's something she could have easily looked up and likely would have done to yep. try to keep me roped into the relationship, and he knows. So, I mean, dealing with – this is why MGTOWs think like they do. Like, they're not – I don't agree with their conclusions of action, like what to sure. do, but the situation is really fucking serious. And I think that's where MGTOW and Red Pill are totally on the same page. Like it's really bad. 
It is. Uh, and it would, and you know what? Listen, man. I mean, MGTOW guys, all right, checking out of the dating market, and we've had our say about that. It's almost as though they look at every woman. I mean, because let's listen, let's let's not dance around it here. Medusa was a dark triad woman. Like she was Machiavellian. Yeah. She, I mean, she had all she had all three. I mean, there's Machiavelli Machiavellianism. She had narcissism yeah. and psychosis. A psychopathy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. There's some stuff I could tell you off air that's like really sad. I don't even share on, in the public because oh, uh, I don't have Christ. I don't have good evidence for it. I don't want to. TSR uh, live bonus uh, bonus material. Too hot for TV. You are listening yeah. to TSR live with Donovan Sharp. This is the 387th edition of TSR live. Um, got some. I actually I've got some questions in the chat. Um, but we are going to get to those Patreon questions because I think those are very straightforward and I think they they can. Um, uh, I think you can have some straightforward answer. Sharp Assist asks, was your private marriage a written agreement? You guys didn't sign anything, did you? Nope. I mean, okay. I'll pull up your YouTube video right now. Hang on a second. Okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, no, it was not. Uh, would that be advisable? Shit, where'd you go? There you are. I mean, so let me, so no, it's not a written agreement. Uh, is it worth writing out? I talked to an attorney. I mean, but if, if I were to do this again, if and when I do, I'm definitely going to talk to an attorney rather than I, I spent a good amount of time looking through it on my own. But it's definitely something you sit down and talk with an attorney about just to navigate some of the more complex issues like common law marriage, right. different risks you might think of. That's that's what kind of DDJ was doing on the fly for us, thinking about different avenues that women could use still uh, not only use, but abuse to, to fuck right. up your life. Hmm. All right. Very no, good. It, was not, it, was not, it was not a written agreement, but there are many things you can put into writing that will facilitate further functions of marriage, legal okay. stuff, uh, medical stuff, uh, yes. wills, stuff like that. Yeah, I was going to say, um, somebody asked power of attorney, medical decisions, yeah. uh, things of that nature. I guess that, that would have to be uh, shored up by a lawyer. Here's an interesting yeah. question. Supremely Sublime, Supremely Sublime says, how did the bridesmaids act? Did they try to convince her? Uh, did they try to talk her out of, did they try to change her mind at the bachelorette party that you know of? Uh, not that I know of, no. Uh, okay. Her bride, her two bridesmaids, and she had the party. My sister was at the, actually at the party that you met. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There, was, there was some interesting things that happened that night that I heard about, of course, but not, you know, looking back on it, but nothing, uh, nothing like this. They were trying to push her out of it. I think off the bat, her sister, her older sister, was probably very averse to it. Okay. But she she wasn't very like assertive or like a type A personality. So what the fuck was I, I she gonna do about it, right? Yeah, it was her sister lived in California anyway, so it's like across the country, you know, they didn't really they weren't super close to that point. Uh so no, there wasn't um the pushback mostly came from like I think older extended family that didn't understand it. They're still living by old books. My uncle, for example, like in his, is in his eighties now. Wow. He was very skeptical of this, like why we were doing it. And I'm like, Yeah, it's because you know, the world has changed. It's not nineteen forty it's not 1950 anymore or 1960. No, no it is it, it yeah. is definitely definitely not. Um yeah. Moan asked, does private marriage work? in all world places he says he's living in in malaysia listen uh, again you're gonna have to ask a malaysian uh lawyer um there was another ah charles caballero asks the private marriage is a way to keep all your secrets like your <clears throat> like your social security number private from identity theft and spammers alike did you choose the private license to make sure no one including your then wife can sell your personal information Interesting. So first of all, there's no such thing as a private license to marriage. What, is, what I'm actually doing is reverting is socially and personally reverting, mar reverting marriage to like pre uh, marriage. License. So watch or listen to the rest of this episode. Go to DonovanSharp.com. Thanks for watching.